Hi, boys and girls. This is a very special Christmas story for Miss Abby. This is her very favorite Christmas story because Miss Abby really, really, really loves cats. And this is called A Pussycat's Christmas. It was written by a very famous author. Her name is Margaret Weiss Brown and a very, very talented um, illustrator. That's the person who draws the pictures. Her name is Anne Mortimer. And when you see the pictures in this story, it almost looks like she used a camera to take a picture of a real cat. Um, but, but she didn't. These pictures were drawn. And I just love this story. It has a lot, a lot of very descriptive words in it. And it's just such a nice story to listen to. So I hope you enjoy it as well. It's called A Pussycat's Christmas. It was Christmas. How could you tell? Was the snow falling? No. The little pussycat knew that Christmas was coming. The ice tinkled when it broke on the frozen mud puddles. The cold air made her hair stand straight up in the air. And the air smelled just like it did last year. What did it smell like? Could she smell Christmas trees? Well, of course she could. And tangerines. And Christmas greens. And holly. And she could hear the crackle and slip of white tissue paper and red tissue paper. She certainly could. The tissue paper rustled. Nuts cracked. Scissors cut. Brrr. There wasn't a snowflake in the sky, but the sky was dark and low. And there was a dark smell of winter air right before it snows. And then click, the street lights clicked on all over town. And as the heavens turned dark beyond the window, one by one, the snowflakes began to fall out of the sky. How did the pussycat know? Could she hear the snow? She certainly could. And she ran right out into the snowstorm. For if there was anything that this little cat loved, it was the cold, dry, fresh, white, wild, and feathery, powdery snow. And she went pouncing around in it, bouncing around in joy. And she ate some of it, and she rolled in it, and dug in it, and played with it. And then she stood up all white with snow, very still, for it was very quiet, very quiet. First, there was no sound, and then there was some, for when everything is quiet, you can hear things far away. From the sky with the sound like steady whispering came the snow the sound of snow. Then the, rent, the wind rattled the black branches and it rattled. It was, the, it was time for pussycat to go into the house. For little cats do not like the wind. They usually do not like the snow, but this little cat did. And the smells of the earth that she knew were all frozen and buried in that white snow. The world was very quiet and very mysterious. Even footsteps were quiet. Pussycat didn't go in right away because through the wind and the falling snow, she heard something. She stood very still and stretched her ears there into the whitened darkness. And soon she heard it coming from far away away up the snowy road. Ding, 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 ding. Jingle, 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 ding. What was it? She heard it going by in the white falling snow. <gasps> she saw it and she saw the sleigh go jingling by. 
Then Pussycat meowed at her window pane, and she heard footsteps coming to let her in. They always let her in right away because they didn't want her out in the cold, and they liked to have her in the house. She walked right into the living room, where she could smell the sharp, tangy smell of the Christmas tree and candles, and nuts and raisins, and apples and tangerines. But they shouldn't have let her stay in the living room, where they were wrapping up packages and hanging things on the tree. And this is why. The pussycat pounced. She pounced on everything. And she waited to pounce with shiny eyes and switchy tail. She waited with shiny eyes for something to fall, to tinkle, to crash, and to break. She battled that, batted that Christmas tree balls with her paw. And she tore at the tissue paper. And she pulled the bows off the packages. So they put her out in the hall and closed the glass door. Pussycat lay down and purred by the fire. She lifted her ears and listened. There was a sound of crackling. Shh, crackle. What was that? Was it the fire? Always there was a sound of snow hissing against the window pane. There was a teeny tinkle little pop as something fell from the Christmas tree and slivered into a million splinters of light. Oh, that was wonderful. The lights gleamed in Pussycat's eyes and then bang, bang, bang. What was that? Someone was hanging the Christmas stockings. Everyone came out and stepped over and around that little cat and put on coats and boots and mufflers and hats and laughed and shuffled about. They kissed each other, each other under the mistletoe and then off they went to church. Suddenly and quietly far off into the night, Pussycat could hear Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. When everyone had gone, it was dark and quiet. The snow had stopped. There was only the smell of the Christmas tree filling the house. And silence. Then softly at first, but distant in the night, she heard people walking from window to window, the dark carolers on the white snow. Through the still air, their voices came to her listening ears, over the silence of the frozen snow, in the silence of the moonlight, in the silence of the night, in the silence of the bright stars high in the sky. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. And the little pussycat purred and purred by the fire. She heard in the distance the music fading far down the road. Then she pushed open the living room door with her paw, and there in the silent house was the Christmas tree. It sparkled and glistened with lights, gold and silver and blue, the light of rubies and emeralds shining like no tree that any cat had ever seen in the woods. This to Pussycat was Christmas Eve. <laughs> Little cat. Oh, I love the pictures in this story. Miss Abby loves kitty cats and Christmas. So thank you for listening to my story.